Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the session on financial aid, next steps in the process. My name is Sam Veter, and I'm the Associate Dean for College Enrollment and Director of Financial Aid at the University of Rochester. I am joined by Michelle Vogel from the Admissions Office and Lucinda Snyder and Christina Schmidt from the Financial Aid Office, and they will be helping me to answer your questions throughout this session. Please note that the Q&A feature is available for you to type in your question. And again, those will answer in a combination of um, Q&A at the end of this session and Michelle, Lucinda, and Christina uh, responding directly to your questions throughout the session. Congratulations to all of you on your acceptance in the class of 2025 at the University of Rochester. We look forward to working with you to make your enrollment um, in, in fall uh, come to reality. First, I wanna share with you some general information about the Financial Aid Office. Um, our office hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 4.30. And we open a little bit later on Wednesday, and that is because we have a staff meeting and training on Wednesday mornings as a team. And even though right now we're still working remotely, we are available by telephone, and we're also available by email, and you can make a Calendly Zoom appointment with your personal financial aid counselor as well. I want to also share with you the link to the FA online portal. This portal is where you will log in and be able to review all of your financial aid information from the documents and the status to the awards to the disbursements that will eventually hit the student account to any processing of loans or any other detail. And that is through the FA online link. And a note to you parents, we do not send paper award letters home or packets of information on financial aid. Everything is through the secure FA online portal. One of the things that I like the best about working in the financial aid office at Rochester is our personalized approach to financial aid. You have already been assigned a personal financial aid counselor. And if you're not sure who that counselor is, you can look on our website or send an email to the general email, finaid at rochester.edu, and we will connect you with your counselor. This provides the opportunity for you to build a relationship with your financial aid counselor over the next four years and for them to really understand your unique financial situation and family situation. And so we think that approach provides the best customer service and gives you direct contact and access to someone in the office. So at this point, you should have already completed the required applications, which are the FAFSA for um, US citizens and eligible non-citizens only, and the College Board Profile, which is requested of both domestic and international students. And you should have already completed those and as a result received your financial aid award. But if you haven't completed one or both of those applications and it's required, I encourage you to do that process immediately so that we can review your application and complete your award. For those of you that have done that already and you've received your financial aid offer, there are some next steps that we will walk you through in order to actually complete your application. We do award the subsidized portion of the federal student loan program as part of our financial aid award. Now you don't have to accept that loan. You can go into FA online and choose to either decline the loan or accept it, or you might choose to accept a lesser amount than what has been offered to you. And you can let us know that directly in your FA online portal. But for those of you that will be taking out either the subsidized portion of the loan that we offered or would like to pursue the unsubsidized federal student loan, it is required that you complete two additional 
steps. One is the master promissory note or MPN, and that is good for 10 years. So you do it once and you'll be all set, not only for the entire four years of your undergraduate program, but likely if you're going on to a graduate or professional program, that MPN will remain valid. You are also required to complete what is called an entrance counseling session before you can receive your first disbursement of your federal student loan. And this session goes over your rights and responsibilities about borrowing the loan and how and when it gets repaid. And both of these requirements can be done at the studentaid.gov, G-O-V, website. And you will indicate University of Rochester. And once you've completed those requirements, we will automatically and electronically be sent the confirmation that they're on file and that we can move forward with processing your federal student loans. Now, for some of you, when you filed the FAFSA form, you may have been randomly selected for a process called verification. The US Department of Education randomly selects about 30% of FAFSA filers and requires that the financial aid office verify the household and income information that was reported on the FAFSA before we can continue to process any type of federal aid. If you have been selected for verification, you would have been notified as soon as your FAFSA form got processed. And likely by now, we would have reached out to you to let you know that we need these additional documents and how you can upload them. And we request that you do that through our iDoc portal, which is basically an imaging portal that we use through the College Board. And in order to complete verification, you will need to complete the Federal Verification Worksheet, which is available to you in the FA Online Portal. And either the IRS data retrieval process on the FAFSA form, which you might have already used the IRS data retrieval, mm -hmm. which links out from your FAFSA form to the IRS, authenticates your identity, and then pre-populates the FAFSA with your tax return information. If you've done that already, then it, great, we're all set. If you haven't, you can either go back to the FAFSA to make a correction and do the IRS data retrieval, or you can upload an official IRS tax return transcript through the IDOC portal. Those documents and any other documents we might need to complete review uh, and processing of your financial aid award, we request that you send again through IDOC, which is the imaging service through the College Board. And we will send you instructions and a list of documents that we require. And also the College Board will send you those instructions on how to upload those documents as well. For example, it's likely if you were selected for verification or if we are requesting copies of your tax returns from 2019, then the other schools that you've applied to will also be requesting that same information. And so for any schools that use the profile like we do, you can upload those through IDOC and we will all have access and it will be uploaded through a secure portal. Now, for those of you that might be receiving any outside or private scholarships, and you likely won't know that until closer to graduation or right after high school graduation, but it's important that you send us any notification on outside scholarships as soon as possible. We do not reduce our grant money um, in those cases. If, if necessary, based on federal regulations, we may have to reduce some need-based federal aid and we would reduce either the student loan or the work study. And that you could choose um, if you want to decline one or both of those. But in many cases, we don't reduce any of the other financial aid and the outside scholarship is just in addition to your existing award. But if you have questions about uh, the amount of your scholarship and whether it will impact your financial aid, I encourage you to reach out to your personal financial aid counselor. One thing we do as soon as you notify us of these and we add them to your financial aid award, we will allow you to deduct that scholarship from your billing statements for the fall and spring semester, even while we're waiting for that organization to send the payment. 
And so that is helpful to you and your family because you can defer payment on those. And some scholarship organizations now are waiting to see your fall grades before they send us the check. And that's okay with us, we'll continue to let the payment defer um, while you complete the fall semester. Another important document that I want to mention is the sibling enrollment verification form. A significant impact on your eligibility for need-based financial aid is whether or not you have siblings enrolled in undergraduate programs, either at Rochester or another institution. And if it is at another institution, there's a form that your sibling will need to have the other institution complete that verifies their enrollment and that needs to be sent back to us. Now, this is not something we want you to do right away. This would be late summer and by early September at the start of the fall semester when uh, the other school can confirm that your sibling is in fact enrolled. Then go ahead and complete the verification form and send that back to us to complete your file. If you filed the financial aid applications with a sibling planning to enroll, and that has changed and they will no longer be enrolled for the next school year, please let your financial aid counselor know immediately because again, this does have impact on your need-based financial aid. And finally, if you're a New York State resident, and especially if we've already estimated that you will be eligible for either the New York State TAP Award, or if you've been notified at your high school that you're eligible for a New York State Merit Scholarship, you must complete the New York State TAP application if you haven't already. At the conclusion of the FAFSA filing, there would have been a link that would have come up where you can continue on and complete the requirements for the New York State TAP application. But if you miss that link, you can go directly to New York's website and complete the application. Also regarding next steps, I wanna talk for a minute about how the billing statements will work. All of the billing is done in the Bursar's office and the financial aid office works very closely with the Bursar to make sure that your financial aid that's been awarded is reflected on those billing statements and actually disperses to your bill once you've met all of the criteria and submitted all of the forms that are required to be eligible for the financial aid. The fall billing statements are sent in early July and they're due in early August. And we send the spring bills in mid-November due in mid-December. Now we do bill twice a year because there are two semesters and you can view and pay your billing statement in our online portal called URePay. Students, you can establish your parents as authorized payers in this portal so that they can not only view the bill, but can make payments as well. And you can authorize more than one authorized payer um, in the URE pay portal. Please note that all students are required to submit a payment agreement. And that lets the bursars know how you plan to pay the bill. Whether you are just gonna pay the whole thing when it's due in one payment, or you wanna do a monthly payment plan that spreads that semester payment out over four equal payments. And international students, you have a slightly later due date in order to allow for time for you to make arrangements for your transfer of payment, either through Flywire or, um, or some other option. I also wanna talk for a minute about how the federal work study program works on campus. At University of Rochester, we have both federal work study and campus employment, which means that all students who want an on-campus job can work on campus if you want to. It is the student's responsibility to find a job. We do not place students um, into jobs, but we do have a job fair at orientation and we have an online portal through JobLink where you can go in and review the openings and apply for the jobs that interest you or, <clears throat> excuse me, 
<coughs> or match your skill set. Students may work up to 20 hours a week on campus and are paid bi-weekly. Funds are not credited toward your billing statement for tuition. So students, if you choose not to work at all, that's okay. It won't affect the balance due on the bill because we don't apply work study earnings to the tuition bill. If you do decide to work anything up to 20 hours a week, then you will get a paycheck that you can use for spending money um, or other incidental expenses. We typically award up to 4,000 a year, which does equate to about 12 to 13 hours a week. Although again, you can work more than that or less than that if you choose. And the current rate of pay is $12.50 an hour. And just a reminder that the first time that you join our payroll system at the University of Rochester, you will have to complete HR forms called the I-9 and the W-4. And in order to do that, you have to show identification in person, cannot be a copy. So you may wanna to bring to campus with you in the fall, your social security card or a passport. Um, a passport works alone by itself, or you can bring a driver's license and a social security card but they need to be your original documents in order to complete the I-9 and W-4. And then once you're on the payroll system, again, you only need to do that once and you can send those uh, important documents back home with your parents rather than keep them here in your dorm room. I also wanna talk a little bit about some financing options that are available to help you and your family pay their portion of the remaining balance after financial aid. As I mentioned earlier, we only include the subsidized or need-based portion of the federal student loan program in the financial aid award. But if you would like to borrow the additional unsubsidized student loan, you can certainly request and do that. Now, for those of you that are eligible, the subsidized portion for a first year student is 3,500. And the unsubsidized portion would be an additional 2000 If you don't qualify for the subsidized loan, then you can do the whole 5500 as an unsubsidized student loan and apply that to the balance due that you and your family would be responsible for. And to apply for the unsubsidized portion, you would complete the form requesting a loan, and it's in the uh, FA online portal. Parents, there, the federal government also has a loan option available to you. It works just like the unsubsidized loan. It will accrue interest while your student is in school. However, you can defer payment on principal and interest if you like until six months after the student graduates or withdraws. Both of these loans have what is called a fixed variable interest rate, which means every year, on July 1st, the federal government updates the interest rates, but then for that academic year, they are fixed and locked in for the life of your loan. So the current rate on the student loan is 2.75% and the parent loan is 5.3. But again, for next school year, those are subject to change on July 1. The federal government also takes a fee off the top of the loan before they send the disbursement to the school for us to apply to your student account. And it's just about a 1% fee for student loans and a little over 4% on that parent loan program. But parents' approval is fairly simple. If you have good credit, you will be approved and you can borrow up to the full cost that you need to pay the balance on the bill. We ask that you apply for the amount that you need for the whole school year. And so that we only have to apply once and everything's in place. And then the federal government disperses it equally in two disbursements under one application. So plan if you're pursuing any of these financing options to apply for the amount that you need for the whole year. The interest does not start accruing until the disbursement is paid to the school. 
We also ask that you wait until after June 1st to apply for the parent loan option because your credit approval is only valid for 90 days. And if you apply now, it's possible that that would expire before we can actually disperse at the start of the fall semester, and then you'd have to reapply again. Now you do the application again through studentaid.gov. This is the same website we talked about earlier, the federal government website where students will do their master promissory note and entrance counseling and parents, you will also do a master promissory note uh, for the parent loan or plus loan application. And then you would actually do an actual application indicating the amount you want to borrow up to the full um, amount of eligibility. If you're interested in an, an additional loan option, but you don't want to take out a loan in the parent's name, there are private student loans that you can get directly through a lender in the student's name. However, the student will need a credit worthy co-signer to co-sign for them. And simply that's because at this point, it's not that they have bad credit, they typically don't have any established credit score yet. And so they will need a co-signer. And the, the better the credit is on the co-signer, the lower the interest rate will be. These loans are set up on a 10 to 15 year repayment plan starting six months after the student graduates or withdraws. They typically do not have any fees, but because the interest rates are monthly variable, they can sometimes run higher than the federal loan programs. Although sometimes they can also run lower depending on the credit score of the co-signer. And you can get more information about these loan options on elmselect.com, which also links from our website in the loan section to elmselect.com. And while I have your attention, just a reminder that you do have to reapply for need-based financial aid every year. The FAFSA and the CSS profile forms are always available on October 1st. And for renewal applications, you have a little bit longer. The deadline is a little bit later. We just ask that you file by March 15th. Again, we always send our award notices through FA Online, and students are notified when they're available through their UR email. Federal, state, and university requires that minimum academic standards are met each semester. We do have those policies. It's called satisfactory academic progress. We do have those policies on our website. For the federal funds and the university grants and scholarships, the guidelines are fairly simple. Uh, we review at the end of each semester and students must have a cumulative GPA of 2.0 or higher. And they must be moving along at a pace of about 67% meaning they have to complete 67% of the courses that they register for earning a grade and not withdrawing from the course. Um, New York State has slightly different guidelines, but also requires a review every semester to determine eligibility for renewal. The federal and institutional policy does have a warning semester. So if you aren't meeting the 2.0 or the PACE requirement, you would first get a warning and have a semester to get back on track. Some common questions that you might ask me that we'll go over first um, are, will my aid change over the next four years? Well, if you've received a merit scholarship through the admissions office, that will remain the same as long as you meet the 2.0 GPA requirement and the 67% PACE your merit scholarship renews in the same amount all four years. It does not increase, uh, but it will renew. But for need-based aid, you must reapply each year. We will re-review the application, but the only time anything changes are if there are significant changes in income or assets in that one year, or due to sibling enrollment changes, because again, Having a sibling enrolled in an undergraduate program does have a significant impact on eligibility for need-based aid. 
So if you have an older sibling in school next year, but then for your sophomore year, they're going to be graduated, that could change your eligibility in the sophomore year for any need-based aid, although merit will not change. Textbooks are purchased separately, um, either at the U of R bookstore or online. Um, it, you'll buy them like you're going to the mall. Um, so there, we give you an allowance as part of the financial aid for textbooks, but they will not show up on your tuition bill. You'll re be responsible for buying your own textbooks. I also want to take a moment to mention our financial literacy program. We are so excited to offer Financial Avenue to our students and alumni. It's a dedicated commitment to providing a robust financial literacy program for our students. This program not only focuses on smart borrowing while paying for college, but also helps students with basic money management skills and personal budgeting as well. So conversations could start early on at orientation even with questions like, what is the difference between a debit card and a credit card? And become more sophisticated throughout the four years so that when you leave Rochester, you'll not only be prepared for your life's work with your degree, but you'll be financially savvy as well with all of the personal budgeting and money management skills in your toolbox uh, to, to lead you to financial success. And most of these are either online or voluntary programs that we do around campus um, that we would invite you to. So participation is voluntary, but strongly encouraged. I also wanna share with you some screenshots of what it looks like it, inside the FA online portal. So when you log in, this is the screen you would see. And if there are any important messages or deadlines or anything, we would post those announcements inside the portal. You can see here, there's a menu with drop down options of what you can look at. And the one that you might find most helpful is the college financing plan. Now, please note for international students, um, this screen is not available to you in your portal. So if you're looking for it, and wondering why um, it, it won't be there for that reason. But for domestic students, uh, the financing plan breaks down the, the total cost of attendance and your family contribution from your FAFSA and your profile, and then breaks down your scholarships and grants that have been awarded, and then outlines also the loan options that are available to you and the work study offer showing a net price before loans and after your financial aid. This is a screenshot of the, uh, the, the document screen, and this is where you can see all of the documents that we need you to submit and the status of that submission. So whether it's been received or is still outstanding, and if it's been received, once we review and approve it, you will see the status change to approve and the status change date uh, change as well. Some of these documents also have links that are hot so that they will direct you to the right place to either obtain the document or for the MPN and the entrance counseling to the studentloans.gov website. We will also share any important messages either related to your documents or your award eligibility here. We are doing a whole separate webinar session to learn more about how to navigate the FA online portal. You can sign up for the, the 2025 Experience Student Support Resources webinar called Navigating Your FI, FA Online Portal. We're offering that twice. Friday, April 9th at 3 p.m. and next Wednesday, April 14th at 4 p.m. So at this point, I will turn it over for questions and I will also um, be monitoring the Q&A.
The first question is, I read that the CARES Act changed the estimated family contribution impact of siblings in college at the same time so that the EFC is now per student instead of for all students in the family. Is that true? And if so, does U of R take siblings into consideration? Um, not quite. Uh, what happened, and it wasn't the CARES Act, it was the bill that was signed at the end of December. Um, the American Cost and Recovery Act, I think it was, that, that um, not only provided more emergency grants similar to CARES, but also significantly changed the FAFSA process, eliminating two thirds of the questions and making it much simpler to file. But that change does not go into effect until the 2000, until the 2023-24 school year. So nothing has changed yet. Um, and, uh, and even when it does, at this point, schools will still consider uh, the impact of siblings for institutional funds in all likelihood, even though the federal government will not. The next question is what has been the average tuition increase in the last few years? Well, this year, um, due to the pandemic, our tuition increase is the lowest that it's been uh, in a very long time, um, maybe ever, and, and it's under 2% that we're projecting. Uh, typically, it's probably more like an average of three to 4% annually. Uh, but those decisions are determined by leadership and the board of trustees every year. Um, are the plus loan fees annual or one time? So the plus loan fee of 4.228 is annual. It's not a one-time fee. You can learn who your financial aid counselor is either by looking on our website most of the counselors are assigned based alphabetically on your last name. And so if you look on uh, the financial aid website at the contact us page, you should be able to tell who your counselor is. If you're still unsure, you can um, email the finaid at rochester.edu email account and we will connect you with your counselor. Can I put the dates up again? Sure, one second. I think you were referring to the dates for the upcoming webinars on navigating your portal. The amount that having a sibling enrolled in school affects eligibility for need-based aid really depends upon each family's individual situation. Um, what I would recommend is that you have that conversation with your financial aid counselor because it has a different impact depending upon what your family contribution is and what the income and assets are. Um, so, but we are available if you work directly with your financial aid counselor to give you an idea of what it would look like if there were only one student in college instead of two, for example. I would suggest that you reach out to your financial aid counselor uh, if you have submitted the forms but haven't heard anything yet. Um, we, we typically turn that around pretty quickly. Um, and we will also follow up if something is still missing. Uh, yes, you will be able to see your merit scholarship 
online. The tuition and fees and costs are in the URE pay portal in the Bursar's office, and just the estimated costs are, are in the financial aid portal that you can see online. Um, scholarships and grants from all sources, not just the university, are only taxable if they are in excess of tuition, fees, and books. And so at the end of each calendar year, you will get a tax document called a 1098T, which you can share with your tax preparer to determine um, if you should file the supplemental schedule um, and what if any of your scholarships are taxable. But just as a side note, scholarships and grants are only taxable if they are in excess of tuition, fees, and books. Uh, the University of Rochester does not compare financial aid offers provided by other institutions. Uh, we are one of very few institutions in the whole country that are committed to affordability through a combination of a robust merit scholarship program and a need-based aid program that meets 100% of demonstrated financial need. So the only time need-based aid can be reviewed for a change is if your family's financial situation changes, because based on the review of the applications and tax returns, we would have already met your full eligibility. And our merit offers are not um, compared to other schools merit offers and could be very different. When we determine merit, we, um, we determine that based on the strength of the student's application and as compared to the other students who are applying to be a part of this class. Um, we typically do not include siblings who are over the age of 23, even if they still are in an undergraduate program in determining eligibility for need-based aid. Although um, if there are some special circumstances to consider, I would again recommend that you have a conversation directly with the financial aid counselor. But uh, typically siblings over the age of 23 are not included. Uh, yes, certainly if you've received just a merit scholarship, you do not have to apply for financial aid to receive a merit scholarship. But if you are interested in pursuing loans in particular, um, or a federal work study, or wondering if you qualify for need-based grants, then you would need to complete the FAFSA and the profile application in order for us to review that information to determine what additional aid you would be eligible for. Living off campus in the junior and senior year is actually typically less expensive than living on campus. Um, and, but that all depends. You know, if someone were living alone in a very, very nice apartment, then it could cost more than living on campus. If they're renting a house with five or six people, then it, it is likely going to be typically significantly less. Um, but we do make adjustments because we meet full demonstrated financial need. We will adjust any need-based aid based on the reduced cost of living off campus. We do not match need-based grants from other institutions or merit scholarships. Typically, yes, uh, fees and room and board typically increase at the same or very close to the same percentage that the board approves the tuition increase. Uh, outside scholarships typically do not impact the financial aid award. They can be used by you in most cases to reduce your out-of-pocket costs. However, 
there are some cases where we might have to change. If the student is receiving need-based federal aid and the outside scholarship creates a federal over award situation, then we are required by federal regulation to reduce the need-based federal aid, which would be the subsidized loan or the work study. And so that may cause an adjustment. Um, or if the impact, if the scholarship is so significant that you would be receiving in excess of the cost of attendance, then we would have to make reductions because you would not be able to receive more financial aid than the cost of attendance. Uh, although those cases are typically rare, most private scholarships are $500 a piece to $1,000, and you might, um, you might win one or two or maybe three, and that would just add on to your financial aid. But again, it depends upon your unique situation, and so you may want to have that conversation with your financial aid counselor. You file the FAFSA annually, and you are not allowed to make any changes once it's filed, unless those changes are corrections uh, to update the, in, the um, income information to correspond to the tax return for that filing year. So once it's filed, you're, you're not allowed to go back and change anything unless it's a correction because the information that was reported was wrong, but you cannot, for example, update any asset information. At this time, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat, in the, in the Q&A, I'm sorry. Um, but if you do have a question, please go ahead and, and put that in the Q&A. Um, if not, I thank you so much for your attendance today, and again, welcome you to the class of 2025.